absolutely beautiful Aries friends and welcome to your horoscope for October of 2020 where this month Aries it's kind of interesting we have a full moon happening in your sign in fact we have two full moons happening this month but the first one's happening in your sign your ruling planet is retrograde so it's almost this sense a little bit of yes okay full moon we can put some closure on some things and move it forward but the energy really speaks to not quite yet let's re-strategize instead and that is not always in that Aries energy, the favorite vibe. There's this sense of let's move forward. This is the way I want things. I want this to look this way. And this month may feel like it's a little bit hard in the first half of the month to just have it your way. And if you actually look at the chart, you can see that there's a much more Western, but also a much more Southern vibe to what's going on. So you are in the right position, but there's very much so still this sense of considering a lot of what's going on in relationships. And so you're realigning, redefining your relation to the relationships in your life and your relation to things in your life. And if you're in the proper balance and relation there. So we'll jump in and talk about that here in just a minute. But as we get going this month, we've got beautiful friends signed up to come over to the Eat and Greets. We'll have Shane M. Nygaard. Jessica Lanyato will be here at the beginning of the month. Basil Farrington's coming. Sarah D. Haven. We've got Julio um, coming over, Natai, Kira Taborn will be here. So it is really a nice loaded month of content coming to the table again. And now, if you do not want to watch these videos with ads, you can come on over and visit me and become a patron on Patreon where I've got the videos up ad free for you so that you can just enjoy the interview, sit back, relax, dish it out, four plus interviews a month available to you when you become a patron and Patreon will continue to grow so I can offer you more and more delicious, deep one-on-one -on -one kind of content available over there without all of the distractions. So if you'd like to do that and have that experience, you can click in the description box down below. But as always, the videos will also be right here on YouTube as well. All right, Aries, as we come in, happy fall by the way. Happy fall. We're in a different season. You've got six months till birthday time. So you are in the quiet. And I do like to remind Aries energies of that. You're in the quiet time right now. So if you are feeling like you're winding down a little bit or you're not as like lustrous and boastful as you used to be, this is an okay time because you're literally in the quiet of your season. So if that's how you're feeling, give yourself some space, give yourself some grace. You get back on stage here just shortly, but right now a little downtime is good. Now we'll have this full moon happening in the energy of Aries. It'll be at nine degrees squaring Saturn, of course, opposing that sun over there in Libra. Now this is going to light up your first house, Aries, and the full moon says that something needs to be ended. It needs to be acknowledged. There needs to be an adjustment of something that needs to happen here. So really, as this moon is in your sign, one of the things I continue to think of for you, Aries, is redo your strategy. What's the strategy of how you're going about things and getting them done? As well as what are your real desires at this time? You know, maybe you had friends, maybe you had associations or groupings or one-on-one or -on -one relationships, and you're wondering if it still fits you. That's okay to rethink if you have the desire to be there or not. Now, the other thing I continue to think of is in a very strong career way, because we do have Saturn acting as your career planet in the general, Saturn's not in retrograde anymore. It's out of retrograde. So truly, what's your strategy for advancement? And it doesn't just have to be career. It's your soul level calling. What are you doing? What do we know you as in the world? What do we see you putting your hands on and giving back? So those are things to think about as this full moon rolls around. Now, when we get to the second of the month, we're going to see Venus taking the shift and moving up into the energy of Virgo. Now, as Venus does her stay in Virgo for basically the month of October, what we can see is that love, romance, finance, all of these things become very practical. You get a little bit nitpicky in them and you can be nitpicky in a way that uses your discernment around these things as opposed to nitpicky as a way that like tears them down or gets into perfectionism or this doesn't look the way that I want it to so it's just not right, it's all terrible, right? We don't wanna take it to that vibe. We wanna take it to, okay, how can I be more meticulous in this area? So this is gonna light up your sixth house space. So your health routines, your day-to-day -day routines, which I also include here, you know, allow Venus to show you what's happening in your mind. What are you thinking? What's the health of your mental uh, 
living place? Is it balanced? Do you feel in balance there? This is a wonderful time where Venus is going to magnetize you and bring beautiful opportunities for health and wellness and balance and diplomacy to this area of your life. If you are having challenges with co-workers or daily systems or processes, Venus actually acts as a really nice salve in this area as well. And Venus does like to attract in money. So if you are independent or you're looking for contracts to come in because you freelance, Venus could definitely be offering you an opportunity for some financial payout or financial opportunity to engage with projects that have to do with work as well. On the fourth, Pluto is going to come out of retrograde and be direct. This is going to light up your 10th house space and he's coming out of retrograde at 22 degrees of Capricorn. So make sure you jot that down. <laughs> I just love that phrase right now, but make sure you look at it on your chart to see where that 22 degrees is at. Now, remember when we had this full moon that was happening on the first, this Pluto coming out of retrograde will still be swept up in this full moon energy. So as Pluto is direct here today and begins this orbit over the the next handful of weeks and certainly over the next handful of months, Pluto is going to show you what was torn down. And then you'll be able to, as Mars comes out of retrograde, allow those structures and allow those things that don't need to be there anymore to wash out of your life. Okay. On the 13th, we see Mercury, who's in the energy of Scorpio, now going retrograde. So he's going to go retrograde at 12 degrees of Scorpio up here in your eighth house. And then he's also going to, at the end of the month, step this retrograde back into the energy of of Libra. So this dance will be with the Mercury retrograde between your your eighth and seventh houses, respectively, because Mercury will be moving backwards. Now, as Mercury is retrograde in Scorpio in general, we're going back into the depth, the intimacy, the fear, the transformation of our joint resources, joint finances, our relationships, sex, sexual health, um, astrology, astronomy, things that are a little bit more esoteric or seem to be taboo. But one of the other things I have a pretty strong sense of with this um, retrograde going through your eighth house is truly that, that question of with Pluto direct now, the ruling energy of Scorpio, where do you need to detox? right? What do you need to detox? What do you need to let die out? What do you need to let go? You've got Venus over here in the sixth house helping you discover and helping you give yourself some grace and some ease and some magnetism to have balance and wellness in your sixth house. So between this eighth house of joint resources, which the connection with your body, what more of a joint resource do you have than to consider, do I need to physically detox? Do I need to do a social media detox? Do I need to do a, what do I need to allow to come out of my body? Body. Now I will say too, if surgery does come up on the table and it's electional, Mars is still retrograde. So if there's a time where you can reconsider that after the retrograde, that may be better. Unless you natally have Mars retrograde, then you might be okay to be able to do that. But that is very chart dependent. Um, but if it's an elective procedure and it can wait, I would still advise that um, in terms of health and, and detox and all of these things. But if something can't wait, then you do you for sure. On the 16th, we've got a new moon happening at 24 degrees of Libra, lighting up your seventh house space. So this is going to bring an opportunity to plant your seeds of intention for new relationships. And it's the seventh house. So in Libra, what I think happens here as well is there are new significant relationships or just significant relationships that become available to have a fresh start. And this could be business. This could be connected to friendship. I also, again, think Aries, you've got a lot going on about the relationship of you with you, the relationship with you and, and whatever you call God, universe, spirit, higher self, any of those things are making these reformations right now, especially with Chiron over there, retrograde in Aries, Mars, your ruling planet is retrograde in Aries. There's just a lot. We've had a moon over there. Who you are, it being in alignment with that is getting a lot of looking after and looking over right now. So it certainly translates that across the street, this is going to realign you with relationships and the relationship of you with you as well. Now, if you're in a committed relationship, I actually think that this new moon is very telling for you because it gives you the opportunity to see in this relationship, good, bad, or indifferent, is there space for a fresh start? Can we breathe some new life in here, some new balance into the relationships? And goodness knows with everybody being at home, what do the relationships look like? Are you rushing over here to try and work, but also try and figure out how to how to be with each other while you're all at home? Like, what does that look like in the balance of relationships? Because this is a very telling and helpful moon for you for that balance, I think. 
On the 22nd, we see the sun stepping up into the energy of Scorpio with Mercury, who's retrograde. So the sun bringing light, heat, life, and vitality. Again, this gives me the sense of burn off level detox, right? Let's detox it, let's let it go. But also the sun being here is going to make these connections for you in these joint resources. Now, because Mercury is retrograde up there, but Mercury's getting ready to move on and get out of the energy of Scorpio. But because Mercury's up there, I'm wondering too, in this joint connection way, if you're having to go back over your taxes, you're having to go back over your money or your resources, that full moon on the first was really a lot about strategy, redoing your strategy, relooking over, do you even in your strategy, do you have the resources to do what you need to do? Do you have the energy to do what you need to do? Is there something that needs to to fall out. So as the sun is here, I think you get motivated to see um, what you can put down and you also get motivated to relook at the joint connections that you have. Now, if you are single, I actually think that the sun coming in here is some good vibes, but Mars is still retrograde, so take it slow if you can. But if there are opportunities that come up for you to share space with a person, whether it's business, whether it's romance, enjoy meeting a person, meeting them at their depth and learning about their journey in the world, okay? When we get to the 27th, we see that Mercury, who is retrograde in Scorpio, now he's moved back into the energy of Libra and will be here until November 3rd, okay? So in the energy of Libra, now it's back here and we're going to have these conversations, Aries, about these relationships again. We're going to get deep in them. We're going to observe our patterns. We're going to observe what you think. You're going to observe those joint connections as well. But I really want to point out something to you as well, Aries. When, when we look at the chart, because the energies have moved more towards the southern half, hemisphere which is the top of the chart and they've moved out of that northern space home and family don't have this huge emphasis it's like you prepared things in the night side of the chart that that um, northern part already and now they're ready to blend with other relationships and start to take form and shape up here in this southern part so as you're going through the month consider that what plans are you able to put into action and into place just here in public, but it takes other relationships and your alignment with them to be able to do that. I do want to tell you on the 24th, Venus is going to come into a trine with Saturn. And I do think that this is a really lovely day actually to um, make a deal or make some kind of commitment that is long lasting. So if that comes up on your radar, just know that's usually a pretty solid day, okay? Now, as we end the, the month, we're gonna end with a full moon called the blue moon. And this is in the energy of Taurus. So just right next door in the second house for you. Remember the full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged or adjusted. So this is gonna create a shift. But also what's happening here is that this moon is right there with Uranus. So this is a surprising moon. So surprises to your money, unexpected things to your money, which can also be very good. You've been working on relationships. You've been nurturing things, getting ready for the career in the night side over the last handful of months. So this can now be an application or something surprising that comes there. Now, the second house is not just about money. It's your creative talents, right? Are you going to suddenly be put on stage or, or do, does something happen and you have to bring out a skill that you have that you just maybe have had back here? Does it kind of pop you out of your shell? Is there a reason where all of a sudden, regardless of how you've been feeling in your self-esteem, you're required to be in some kind of action or show up in that way. Either way, it is an unexpected blue moon, right? Oh, once in a blue moon. So that's giving it away already. And then we put that bad boy together with Uranus. And I think that this moon will bring a little bit of surprise to the table in your finances and in your relationships and in the things that you value for sure. So please keep me posted as this is a very lunar month we've got going. So let me know what's happening for you. How are you doing? How are you faring, Aries? What's coming up, excuse me, what's coming up for you, Aries, especially in terms of your identity in relationship to your relationships? Let me know it all in the comment section down below. All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I hope to see you over at Achuta Bhava's Nightlight series where I will be presenting a talk on astrology and social media. That's October 17th, and you can get registered in the uh, um, description box down below. All right, I love you guys, and I'll see you next month. Bye.